Technology Enhanced Learning Team at the University of Derby and we're very lucky and privileged to have been using B5 since January this year with the first UK university to be doing so. So this presentation is a run through of where we've been over the past nine months and how we've got here <laughs> and I'm going to aim to be quite honest about that so hopefully you get a good overview of where we are. Um, our project is being led by our team, Technology Enhanced Learning, and we are a centrally based team within the organisation and we are academic focused, that's our main, we're all learning technologists. So we've got quite a wide remit and within this Pebble Pub pilot we've had users from right across the organisation, so that's been our focus. So, yeah, dirty washing, well, I think that's a good place to start, sort of to give you an idea of our background and where we've come from. I am conscious I'm being recorded, so perhaps it's time to so, It's just to give you a really good idea of where we've been. So we had V3 at the university and it wasn't being used. So, and I think the reasons for that were implementation hadn't been done properly, there were lots of niggles about who was doing the admin, it was existing across different departments. Unfortunately, I think colleagues alluded to earlier, there was restructuring going on, so the TEL team didn't have the resource necessarily to support PebblePad. We also got a bit of a reputation at the university as being very clunky, and funnily enough, I saw an academic yesterday who described it as excruciating, and she said she could take that with you. It's like, oh, lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> on a positive note, well, go on to the positive. Yeah. Yeah. She likes. So we are. So we did have some positive. We did have some case studies that were going on. So there was a bit of practice. So to come back to the team, myself and Nicola have only been at the University of Derby for 18 months. So when we both arrived, sort of mm, about a year ago last summer, we were given the task of looking at our portfolio provisions. So we work across technology enhanced learning, lots of projects, and our SMT were really keen to engage back with the portfolios. So on that note, I sent um, Nicola went out to Mini Bash last it's year. It's called Mini Bash in Birmingham, yeah. So Nicola went out to Mini Bash last Birmingham, really excited, Look, wants to know all about Pebble Pad. We've got a fresh pair of eyes to it. Eight o'clock the following morning, she was at my desk going, oh my God, they've got a new version coming, it looks amazing, what are we going to do now? I don't want to be free anymore. So, yeah, that's kind of it. So, we're going to just pause there slightly. So at the same time, as I said, we knew. So I'd been out doing a piece of work with all our deputy heads of departments. So going around from a tell perspective, going, well, what were your priorities for the upcoming year? And Monkside was really keen to hear that e-portfolios was one of the things they were really keen on. And a nuance of that was that they wanted something that was institutionally supported. So when we have conversations about e-portfolios, we, we do refer them to WordPress and Blackboard and Google Sites. But because they wanted to get involved in it for assessment purposes and they wanted something with a bit more rigour, they were like, well, we really want something that's, you know, internally focused, it's supported, it's single sign-on. So that's where we were. So those were sort of two conversations at that same time. So, why V5 and a staged implementation? So Nicola came back, we had those conversations with SMT, they're like, no, go ahead, we want the portfolio project. So we were in a position, we could have paused and done nothing and waited till now to have started re-engaging. We could have reignited V3 with a lot of enthusiasm that we were prepared to give. But we sat down with SMT and Pebblepad and Pebblepad was so kind to us and so trusting to say, look, we've got B5 launching in January to Australian clients, you can get on board. And we were like, yes, thank you. So they advised us on a staged implementation with some consultancy which we took. So that's where we started off back in January. We did a whole lot of work with Debs, our consultant. We sat down with all the project management cards that Pebble Pub produced. They were lovely. They were really easy to use. So we sat in a meeting. We were really fortunate to get IT in the room, which helped as well early on. So we planned it out. We had all our milestones for this year. It was great. So that's really helped us. That was from the beginning. So we were also quite lucky to have kept the money in the budget that we had for V3 to enable us to do this staged implementation. So this year we've only gone with 250 licences from January till the end of the academic year. That's a scalable out. 
So, how did we get our people back on board? Well, as I said, we were talking to our deputy head, so we're learning technologists, and it's all about nurturing those relationships. So we found out where we got those interested staff, and we were starting approaching them. We also got the details of those that have been using V3, and we were talking to them about what we were doing and getting them back on board. So, a little bit about how our approach, so how do we attack this new V5 project? So, I think he's keen to look at what our drivers might have been. So, at the top of this slide, these are sort of the drivers that I think led people back to us and got them all excited about the portfolios. First one is e-submission. We did an e-submission project back at the University of Derby for a few years now. So submitting online seems to be part of everyday academic practice. And we think this is why we're taking that next confidence step in wanting e-portfolios. The second big driver for us is we've got a College of Arts department and they were really keen on wanting to be able to use portfolios in a creative way, uploading all sorts of media types and doing it with a particular <coughs> imagination. Um, Three eyes up there, that's our Derby logo. So we had some strategic drivers, I'm getting a bit professional now, you know. So it was embedded in our learning and teaching strategy, aims of about employability, digital literacy skills. We got some colleges and putting those sort of skills and requirements in to enhance them plans. So those were think the drivers. So as learning technologists, Nicola in particular, we were sitting down and having really detailed conversations with those pilot users. So maybe that's something that we probably hadn't done properly before with looking at e-portfolios in particular. So who, how, where, what, why, when? So what is it you want to do? What, what's your, you know, what do you want? Why, where's your remit coming from? Is it for assessment? What do you want to get out? Do you want to use media? And finding out who you're going to share it with, if anyone. And we managed to build up a picture of what solution, because, you know, we've only got 250, so we might have been going, well, actually, if you just want to blog, the world can see, use WordPress. So we had those quality conversations so that we knew when people were crucially wanting to come onto Pebble Pack, we knew that was the right solution for them. So we were giving ourselves a good standing chance. Incidentally, when we were starting to have these conversations, Debs was really kind and sat in on a few of them. So she was present and guiding us in some of these conversations, which I think was brilliant support because we, we didn't feel constrained about the advice we were given, even if it maybe wasn't Pebble Pad at this particular time. So, from a practical approach, how do we implement V5 at Derby? Because I think this is a theme from some of the other presentations. We've got a big learning technology team, so I'm quite fortunate we've got a lot of resource, but we've dedicated Nicola and my colleague Ian, who's also couldn't be here today, um, they've been specifically focused with rolling out V5. We decided because it was such a small project that rather involve IT services who support the students as do our study skills team, that we take the, the, all the support on board ourselves so that it means that we could get up and running without having to train everyone else, go through IT's policies and procedures. Um, so we've got an LTI link with Blackboard, so that has helped us, we got that up and running. And then we also, because we were new to V5, there was no support materials. So we've created those little videos ourselves and a few other bits and bobs, and we integrated those into our Blackboard modules where we had the links to Pebble Pad. So that's been our general approach, and I'm going to hand it over to Nicola, who will tell you more about the project. Okay, so um, I'll move on to more about the examples and where it's worked. So how has PebblePad been used or planning to be used in the in the forthcoming academic year? We can sort of very broadly put it into these four categories. So portfolio creation, no surprise there. So um, technical theatre were um, the first in the first stage of the pro revisiting PebblePad were very much keen to wanting to have an internal portfolio system to give you a little bit back of their background. They've tried Blackboard portfolios, they've tried Google Sites, and it's just too cumbersome because, relating back to what Claire said earlier, the really rich media content was needed to, for students to upload and create their portfolios with it. So I approached that lecturer and said, look, we've got PebblePad. <laughs> Let's try it, it's going to work. Um, and she was, we went on that journey with together um, and it, it has worked, it's been, been really good. And because 
the solution, there was a problem and it's a solution, it's been identified and it was a, you know, somebody that's really going to benefit from this. She has now done a lot of my work for me really because she's been advocating it and her enthusiasm shows that within the College of Arts this forthcoming academic year it's already scaling up so we've got fashion students will be using it, um, costume and set design and how does it... Um, <laughs> Costume set design and drama and theatre. So we've got a lot already within within that within that faculty college using it because of Rebecca sharing her her practice. So how they've been using it, it's not just a oh let's just stick some stuff in there. It is um, to document their their learning journey as a student. So they will be using it from year one until they graduate and and beyond now because it's an alumni account. So it's about that and it's also about reflecting on their learning. They also work within Derby Theatre, it's partly owned by the University of Derby, so they get that practical skill of, of doing it for real. So it's about, well, what role did you take? Um, how have you overcome any challenges that you've got to reflect on? And documenting that, that practical experience too. So that sort of, those sort of elements are now being transferred to the other programmes within the College of Arts. Um, PDP, so um, personal development, so this forthcoming academic year we will be using it with nurses um, instead of just the competency based stuff we're sort of leaving alone a little bit, <laughs> I've got to get my head around it, but um, until a bit further on along the journey. So we're using it with nurses this forthcoming academic year to document that the training they've been going on, um, clinical supervision and the reflective writing, CV uploads and all those sorts of things as a, as a starting point with, in the back of my head, knowing that it's going to be competency based <laughs> in the very near future. Um, so that's, I can't tell you a great deal about the feedback with that, but we've built the workbook and actually this week while I've been here, while I've been here, Ian's been doing the induction with, with those nursing students. <coughs> Um, and also for sport, again, they were using Google Sites, and actually this is not a very good effort for Google, <laughs> but they um, were finding it cumbersome to manage that process because it was for, for assessment. So again, we've made uh, the workbook for, for sport, and it's about um, them um, sort of reflecting on their, their personal development and them as a coach, etc. is all what that workbook is based around. And then we've got... Um, links of employers, so interestingly we have higher apprenticeships which are mineral products, so they're based in quarries and goodness knows where to it doing that. Um, so we've got this, like referring back to the presentation on, on a couple of days ago, this link between the theory and the workers, so we're, we're using that to bridge that gap a little bit. So um, they are asked to do a, a reflective <coughs> blog about what they're learning each week, along with other things with it. And so now the lecturer can see what they've been doing in, in work, and they've also seen the um, comments from the supervisor at work, hence why we've used PebblePad, so it can be shared to um, employers and back to the university. So that's helped the lecturer when they're back in the classroom to use reference points of what they've been doing to, to bring the, the theory to, to life and relevant to them. Um, and then we've got, have we got that? And, and then a range of multimedia, so I've already sort of said that in terms of College of Arts, but also um, within a module within human biology actually, which is a really good example of, it's been used within um, a science communication module. So students are asked to analyse and see how science is communicated to different audiences in different places. So they will go to a museum, they will go to look at children's literature, they'll look at charities and analyse, is, is that scientific facts in there? How, why is it being presented? How it's being presented? And so again, they, they're able to put a lot of multimedia content in there. Um, one of their extended tasks of that is to write their own children's um, story. So we've got nice, lovely images of of a children's book which they've created in there too. So you can see already it's it's growing. We haven't done a great deal of promotion at all. It's literally from these getting the, the right people right in the in first instance and they've become our advocates and communicated, look this is fantastic, this is what we're doing. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. 
Um, so some student <coughs> feedback for you. So very positive basically, we've got five minutes, oh my goodness, so, uh, so that's it's very, really positive, easy to use, Can, again lots of multimedia in there. Staff feed, feedback, the best one there I think is we're very excited about Purple Pad, it's exactly what we're looking for. Um, it wouldn't have been possible to get the content that we've got without the use of Pebble Pad. So again, they're really positive. Um, <laughs> in terms of what's next, <laughs> we can only see that um, the use of Pebble Pad will just expand, um, which leaves me and Claire back, okay, back yeah. in the office having lots of conversations of, well, okay, we've got these pockets of really good practice, but the presentation that was given today by Tracy about, well, how do you, how do you scale this up? Because at the moment it is pockets of good practice. And obviously we've got that historic change in the perceptions of, of portfolios and, and pebble pad that we, we're now there. People are a lot more positive about it and actually we can't cope with the demand that we're getting. So um, our plan <laughs> bit was to go from 250 to 1,000 this academic year and then to 2,500 next year. Um, but we find ourselves in the position in September of this year that we've gone up to 2,000 licences now. They're all allocated. There's none left. <laughs> um, what, what, do we do, what do we do next? Um, and it is about our approach. How are we going to do this? So um, our manager, like head of, head of TAL, has had a meeting with the Dean of Health and Social Care. She knows what the work that's been going on with um, nursing and some other programmes and like ultrasound are, are going to be using it as well. Um, oh wow, that's brilliant. Uh, can they take it away with them? Can they use it after alumni? Oh, that's great because then they can revalidate the <coughs> NMC. You can see the brain ticking. Yeah, we want all of our programmes to be using it in this, in this college now. So it, it gives us food for thought. It's like, oh, we haven't got enough support. <laughs> <laughs> this is only one bit of my job. I actually support the College of Arts and uh, Law and Humanities as well. Uh, I, I do need work-life balance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so which is, it's a fantastic position to be in, but that's where we're thinking. And we've still got these systems on the side there because we will always be very... Well, actually, just tell me what you, your expectations are. What do you want to get out of this? Is this the right system for you? Be a bit of a devil's advocate, really, and say, but well, you could do that in that and see what the reaction is. What What is your vision for the use of Pebble Pad? Is it just for this module, or are you foreseeing that it will be for the whole program, the whole college, or, or what is it that you, you want to do with it? Um, and we do need to bringing more involvement in with the other support departments like study advisors etc now as well at this at this point as we expand um, and also really at the moment we're kind of converting current practice into pebble pad and we want to get to a position where it's innovative practice very much so so it's about empowering people to do things differently rather than just well I've got this paper folder can you turn it into a power pad one. So like, well, yeah, but it's kind of the same. <laughs> how, you, how is this changing your practice and, and how are we enhancing the teaching and learning to what you could have done in, with other stuff? So that's where we are. I think also interesting, quickly to add, sorry, you yeah. sort of picked up on training earlier, you discussed at Plymouth <coughs> that you're spending 15 minutes training. I think that team's experience is yeah, they're hardly training, a couple yeah, of videos yeah. and yeah, they're off on their own. It's, yeah, there we, is no we training. We were slightly concerned about saying, oh yeah, we'll support it. it yeah. But actually I've had no, well, very little. The only people that I've had um, sort of students phoning me up with is because they're working at a distance so it's been quite difficult to put an email with instructions and they go there's a video so it's a really quite yeah. sensible questions that are asking. b 5s really hitting this sort of app culture where you download it, install it and off you go it just seems to be another great experience. And within the workbooks as well we've embedded videos mm. so they're on that page how do I do that watch, watch the video. I think these are some questions actually that we have for you rather than do you have any questions? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we like to do things differently. So we like to catch up with you outside being. So it's like how do you track your active users? So that's the other thing we're getting in, sort of bit of admin questions. How much time do you spend on training and support? We think we we're very minimal and anyone else sort of been in through the stage implementation group would be really interested to talk to you.